It was a significant incident. It was a significant assault. And uh, this individual female uh, did manage to escape. And uh, that could very well have been uh, the catalyst to start the chain of events. That person was the shooter's girlfriend. Police say she hid in the woods overnight. They got that first report of a shooting at a home in the same area, port a -Pic. Officers arrived on scene at 1026 Saturday evening and found a man who said he had been shot in his car by someone in a passing vehicle that looked like a police car. I've been a police officer for almost 30 years now, and I can't imagine any more uh, horrific uh, set of circumstances uh, when you're trying to search for someone that looks like you. That first scene was chaotic. Police found several bodies, a total of 13 dead in port -Pic. There were already several buildings engulfed in flames. Police say they learned of a possible suspect fairly early and that his home, garage and three vehicles were all on fire. They also knew he had a pistol and long-barreled weapons. What I can tell you about the weapons is, is that uh, at this point in time, uh, we've been able to uh, trace one of those weapons back uh, uh, to Canada and the remaining weapons that uh, have been recovered, uh, it's believed uh, that they were um, obtained in the United States. All night, the search for the suspect was fruitless. Then at 6.30 in the morning, Gabriel Wortman's girlfriend emerged from hiding and began providing critical information. She told police he had a replica RCMP cruiser and was wearing a police uniform. It's nothing like a, like a human source or an eyewitness. I mean, they, they can tell you things, you can ask them questions, you can have a conversation with them. More than 12 hours after that first call came in, a second series of 911 calls. The gunman shot and killed corrections officers Alana Jenkins and Sean McLeod, set their house on fire, and also killed a passerby, Tom Bagley. Then he encountered Lillian Hislop out for a walk and killed her too, before continuing south to Debert. Acting as an officer, he pulled over Kristen Beaton and Heather O'Brien and killed them. Meanwhile, Constables Heidi Stevenson and Chad Morrison used their police radios to arrange to meet near Shubenacadie. When Morrison arrived, he thought it was his colleague waiting for him in a police car, but it was the gunman who immediately opened fire. Stevenson was getting closer now. Her cruiser ended up colliding head-on with the gunman's. He shot and killed her and took her gun and bullets. Joey Weber was running an errand when he happened upon the scene. Joey knew ahead of time what was going on, and he jokingly said to his, his uh, girlfriend, Shanda, before he left the house, well, I must go out and get the, get the furnace oil and get back before that crazy guy gets down here uh, shooting people. But Weber became the next victim. The gunman set Stevenson's vehicle and his own on fire and left in Weber's silver SUV. But he had one more stop, the home of Gina Goulet. He killed her and stole her car. When he went to fuel it up at the Irving Big Stop, by chance, the police also happened to be there. They shot and killed him, ending a 13-hour manhunt nearly 100 kilometers from where it all began. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, Halifax.